And that's something that you probably could put together and just create some sort of like headers and stuff like that. I personally, when I first using the Power Apps, I've never used those and I wondered why would I use those? But I'm gonna show you like simple approaches, simple design tips. I'm not a designer, but at least I could show you things that you could do with those and then group them together and make the, make your application look even better. Uh, grouping. So grouping is, is something as well as overlooked. And I've seen multiple applications, a lot of applications that went like, you know, not grouping the controls. Grouping the controls makes that uh, makes the controls uh, works as one entity. Those not all the functionalities that natively supported by each and every control will be found inside of the group that you do. But grouping is a nice way that you put everything together and then you can move them around when you're working uh, with with the design. And that's something that just gets as well overlooked, uh, which is grouping. Components. Components are a really amazing way of working with um, uh, uh, controls that you want to uh, 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 use uh, over and over again within your app. And the header that you guys have seen uh, within the demo that I showed you is actually a component. So I don't have to write the code over and over again, and I could pass parameters to customize that component based on the screen that I'm showing. So uh, the components is really, and, and one re uh, recent um, uh, feature that have been released, which is the component libraries. And that's something that you don't use actually locally within your uh, app, but rather than that, you will have a library that is shared across the apps and then you could use those components across all the apps instead of using those components locally. And I believe that's a really amazing uh, feature that have been released uh, recently by the Power Apps uh, team. All right. Balloon messages. Balloon messages are usually a, a, a way that you could guide the users while they're doing something. So they could just click on a button or give them a piece of information as well. So. That's something that as well I'm going to show you. Um, I've used components as well. I've used a component to uh, make sort of like a balloon message and I show it and hide it based on timers. Loading. So if you have uh, an operation that takes time and then you want uh, uh, to show sort of like, you know, uh, a loading um, uh, 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 page until the process is finished and that's something that you could be able to do that. We're going to show you as well uh, uh, how you can do the loading <coughs> pop-ups okay so the the power apps does not support pop-ups by by design that's something that you need to do that yourself but uh but at the same time that you could create your own pop-ups uh use some uh, uh some uh, design tricks to be able to have some pop-ups as well that pops up gives a message or give confirmation as well for the users and that's something that as well I haven't seen uh, a lot uh, in in um, uh, in a lot of apps that I work with. Images. Images are a great way that you could just um, uh, add more, uh, let's say, movement, add add more nice things to your app. So you could use GIFs if you don't know that, and you could just have have some kind of like you know movement that's going on within uh, your app. And even you could use the images as the background of your um, of your app, and then you will have the design all as as a background, and then you will just um, uh, design your uh, buttons, your uh, text boxes, or whatever in front of those, and then you will have sort of like you know a slick look of your app. Uh, and images are a nice way as well to doing uh, a workaround. They're going to be talking about, which is going to be the last slide. Uh, okay, generating QR codes. I actually found this on one of uh, on the Power Apps forum as well, and I'm going to show you a trick how you can generate the QR code using a free service from Google. And finally, is calling Logic Apps from Power Apps. So this is this is not supported by design, so you could not call uh, uh, or do a connection to uh, a Logic App directly from Power Apps. But that's something you could do a workaround that would be able to um, uh, come around. Okay, so those are the uh, tips and tricks, and I'm just going to show you um, the uh, demos right now. So we'll start by the timer. 
So these are the timer controls. So uh, as I mentioned before, it's not just for showing the time. It, it's as well for um, uh, 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 doing the uh, different tips and tricks. So I'll just go to a splash screen. And as you can see here, it just moves uh, forward. So the way that I did the splash screen, so if I go back to the splash screen itself, Uh, OK, so I'm here on the splash screen. So as you can see, the timer. Another uh, another trick that I'd like to do, instead of hiding the control <coughs> so you, you don't see it at all, you could see the control if you put it offset, so outside of the bounds of your, uh, of your design. So uh, what I do usually is, if you look at the timer, I put the, the position is uh, 1380 and that side uh, is actually outside of the bounds of my design and that's something I like to do I don't know if you like to do that or you want to use the hide uh, but still for me I could see the control it just makes it easier for me to understand that this is part of the design and what I did is actually I set the local variable uh, not sorry uh, not, not a local variable so when I open this this up so the timer starts automatically and what I do is I, I set when the timer starts. And uh, let me see here if I could get to the uh, event. OK, so on timer start, sorry, on timer end, it navigates to the next page. So you could put that, for example, for three seconds, two seconds, whatever. And then after that, it just navigates to the next page. And if I want to do that, like for example, show an important message, show something to the user, that's something that you could do. Uh, whether it's a screen that you, you want to show uh, a message or it's the first screen uh, showing loading, or whatever, you could do that with a splash screen. All right. Uh, and now we move to the rectangles and in, in, uh, circles and icons. And as you can see here, this one in here is actually. Um, uh, a text box and behind it is a rectangle and this is a circle and this is an icon in the front. So I've used that to do a header and you could just use your imagination while you're doing that. Don't judge me on the colors, but you could still do that. It just makes even better way of, of doing the design. The other thing that I want to mention is actually the grouping. So if I open that, you could see here I have the city header. I have the country header. Uh, and I have the population editor. Apparently, I've copied that, and that's why it says city uh, underscore uh, city header underscore one. But that's another way that you could do the grouping, and then you could have them uh, as as one entity. You could just move it around instead of just uh, moving one control at a time. All right. So we go next. Components. So as I mentioned, components, if, if it's something that you want to reuse, instead of use groupings, you use components. And, and as I mentioned before, the latest, um, uh, the late, the latest uh, feature from Power, App, uh, Power Apps, which is you could just bundle those within a components. And uh, for example, I have some headers here that you could just uh, pass text, pass an image, or something that something like that, like this is an awesome balloon message. So I could use that with a timer, so when I open this, I could show here things and then hide them. So if I go back, forth, you could see here, it just shows for three seconds and then hides again. And this is a balloon message. So if you want to guide the user, you could use that as well within the app. The next thing is the loading screen. So I've imitated that as if uh, the saving the data takes a lot of time. So uh, I'll just go uh, say uh, Oslo, uh, sorry, uh, Norway, uh, Oslo, and then set the population uh, like this. And I save that. And as you can see here, this is a loading screen. I can't click on anything until the loading ends. And the, uh, the approach that I've used here is I've used a component. Uh, if I go to... Um, loading screen in the loading screen i have uh, a loading component and in the loading component i have two controls the first one is actually a rectangle that is transparent and as you can see it just it, it grays out everything at the back 
and there's an image in the front, which is the loading image. And it's it's not a complicated uh, control. So if you can see here, as you can see here, this is the uh, component and this is the image, and that's it. Okay. All right. So this is something that you'll be able as well to use, which is a loading screen. If you have a long operation that is going against the source. Okay, pop-ups. So <clears throat> as you notice that if I want to delete the data, I didn't have confirmation in the previous uh, uh, ones. So I could do here and I could show a confirmation. So I could click here and, and notice that I can't click around because there's as well greatness. It's the same approach that I, as I used with loading. You could use it here as well. Once you click yes, it actually removes the data. So I remove this. And as you notice, this is a good way as well, uh, which is using pop-up uh, messages. The next one is using images. And as you can see here, I've just used a couple of images, just put them around. <laughs> but, but you could use this as a background uh, for your component up here, for example. And that's something that will add just more spice to your uh, uh, app. Generating QR. So generating QR is actually I'm using a, a, a Google uh, uh, service, which is chart.googleapis.com. And then you pass in chart and you want that as a QR. And then you pass the value that you want uh, for that. So for example, if I want to uh, get the QR code for Berlin, so this is the QR code for Berlin. This one is for Madrid. It just takes time because it's just calling the uh, URL. Same thing as well, this is for Hamburg, this is for Munich, and it's just looking at the text box and just passing the value here to the uh, uh, URL. This is a really nice way of generating QRs within your app. If your app uses the scanner or you want to, to scan something that you want to pass this ID and just get data, that's something you'll be able to do as well. Uh, generating QR, okay, apparently. Okay, so the last one, which is calling uh, logic apps. And this is actually using a, a workaround. So what I do here is I'm using a local variable that I set the value for uh, my logic app. And uh, what I do in here is I want to send an email, for example, when whenever um, uh, I click on this and I want to send this data using a logic app. So it's just a very simple logic app. And as you can see here, this is the, 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 the link. And I pass in here, <coughs> I pass in here uh, some query, uh, query strings, which is the country, the city, and the population. And I show that in, in the um, uh, uh, in the email that I'm about to send. So when I click on this, I set the local variable, which is called is it's called call URL. And then I have, uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I have an image which is this one, it's called image call logic apps. And the image, the URL for that image is actually that logic app call. So what happens is that the image URL, it imitates a call to an HTTP. So I just try to get the image, but instead of getting an image, it will call my URL. And that's sort of like a workaround. And then it will just initiate the, uh, the logic app. So if I uh, run this, Let's say I want to get the data for uh, Munich, and it should uh, then call that, and I'll be getting an email uh, in a while if the internet's still working. And as you can see here, I got this uh, just right now. If I go back, and which is uh, Germany, Munich, and the population, and this is has been called <coughs> using uh, a logic app. And this is sort of like a workaround. I know it's the, not, not the best way. It's not secure. I'm using an HTTP request and then I call that and I send in the parameters. And that's, it's not the best way, but, but still, if you want to do that anyways, you could just do that using the app because it's not provided by design for the, uh, uh, by the Power Apps, but something that you could just go work around on. And by that, I believe that 
Uh, that's all the tips and tricks that I have for today. I don't know if we have any questions. Uh, so, all right. Okay. Thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, and there is one question from the attendee. Uh, and yeah. it's about yeah. after generating QR, what action takes next? Or how can I set actions after QR? How you can set actions after QR? What kind? It depends on what what kind of actions. Like, if you have a scanner, for example, and if you want to scan that and you want to have an action, that depends on the scanner control. But if you got a QR code, for example, that's just an image. It's just showing an an image after all. So there's no actions basically involved. It's just uh, calling that URL and retrieving that image and showing that image in in there. Uh, so pretty much you cannot do that much with the image control when it, when the image is is, is shown. Uh, basically what you need is just uh, some sort of like um, uh, a user uh, interaction or button underneath the uh, the QR or something like that. All right, great. Um, any other questions, anyone? All right, I think uh, we can end uh, this session and thank you everyone for joining this. It is over now. You may go to community zone for which you can find instruction on the website and have a great conference. Thank you, Ahmed, for your time as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for putting this together. Appreciate it. Bye bye and have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.